हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी लॉन्गिजनल स्ट्रेसिस एंड हुफ स्ट्रेसिस हाउ वी फाइंड आउट मैथमेटिकली फॉर ए सिलेंडर राइट लेटर ऑन वी विल डू फॉर स्फीयर्स बट फॉर सिलेंडर फॉर स्फीयर्स देर इज नो लॉन्गिजनल स्ट्रेस देर इज ओनली हुफ स्ट्रेस इन बोथ डायरेक्शन सो फॉर सिलेंडर्स वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट सिलेंडर्स वट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ लॉन्गिजनल स्ट्रेस एंड वट इज हुफ स्ट्रेस in terms of given parameters like pressure is given to us diameter of the cylinder is given to us thickness is given to us three things are known so known quantities are known quantities are pressure of the uh, cylinder applied internal pressure diameter internal diameter of the cylinder and thickness thickness of the cylinder three things are known pd and t and based on this we want to find out the stress is developed in terms of pd and t right so let us talk about longitudinal stress first let us say we have cylinder the same figure we are making again which we have already made in the previous lecture uh, like this that this is the this is the uh, cylinder and let us see here these are the longitudinal stress on this area on this area sigma l is developed sigma l and this pressure is applied on this area pressure is applied on the inner inner diameter on inner diameter uh, and the area is pi by 4 d square right because diameter of this cylinder is given to us internal diameter at which pressure is applied is d and thickness is t t is the thickness of this material so pi by 4 d square is the pressure applied at which this area and sigma l is is the area of this circumference right circumference at which longitudinally the stress are developed right so because the cylinder is not bursting it means this is in static equilibrium it means stress due to this pressure will be equalized by the uh, sigma l stresses right so these are the resisting stresses and this is the pressure applied by the material uh, by some external agency like fluid and other thing right so this pressure is applying here for static equilibrium for static equilibrium if the body is not bursting it means that this pressure multiplied by this area the forces it means that forces right this force and this force should be equal so pressure multiplied by area at which this pressure is acting that is pi by 4 d square that must be equal to the stress sigma l multiplied by the area area at which stress is developing and what is the area area what is the area of this this thin uh, ring ring you can see this is a ring right at which these stresses are acting this ring what is the area of this ring right so this is the d and this is t thickness so what is the area of this ring for the time being we are considering as ring because this is a thin cylinder so this will be pi d multiplied by t you already know that right for thin rings the area is given by pi d t isn't it so the sigma l or longitudinal stress is given by p d to d cancel p d by 4 t pi to pi cancel p d by 4 t so this is the stress longitudinal stress developed in the cylinder right in this direction longitudinal direction or linear direction right so this is important you have to remember this remember this that longitudinal stress in thin pressure vessels is given by pd by 40 pd by 40 very important formula and we will apply this formula directly in our numericals right so pd by 40 is the stress developed in linear direction or longitudinal direction right second is the hu stress hoof stress or circumferential stress because it is acting at circumference circumferential stress hoof stress or circumferential stress so we can draw again the same figure which we have already drawn that in this direction it is acting in this direction it is acting right and or in other sense you can show by different different ways so that it may may be more clear 
suppose this is this is cylinder this is cylinder so circumferential is like this so circumferential stresses are in this direction like this in this direction in circumference direction like this right so like this on the circumference so these are the hoop stresses or circumferential stresses right so it is acting on the entire length on the entire length right so we can show it by different way by cutting if i cut it into half what type of stress you will you will see in this case if i cut it suppose i have cut it from this section this part and we want to see the hoop stresses how these hoop stresses are acting right so you can see here you can see here that these hoop stresses are like this if i make it more clear i want to make it more clear like this so at this section at this point the hoop stress is like this and at this point the hoop stress is like this right you can see here so if i cut it from the section so what type of stress you will see that is like this i am making here i have cut it into the section like this and uh, and on the entire length entire length these stresses are developing on the entire length like this right and also here on the entire length right length of this cylinder right like this so on the entire length these stresses are developed and this will be like this that upward direction like this this is upward direction upward and downward right so tensile stresses are there like it is going upward it seems that it is going upward perpendicular to this surface right like this right so this is how these hoop stresses will be developing right these are sigma h hoop stresses which is developing on the entire length right for the entire length suppose this is the length length of the this cylinder suppose length of cylinder is given to us so these are the stresses developed right and suppose the length of the cylinder is l this is the length of the cylinder l like this right and the pressure is acting on the why the stresses are developed due to pressure because pressure is acting on this way on this part like this this pressure right this pressure is acting in downward direction and due to which this stress is developed right so in equilibrium for static equilibrium what is happening here static equilibrium what is happening here that this pressure multiplied by the area area of this cylinder on which the pressure is acting and what is the area on which the pressure is acting what is the area what is the area that is the length length multiplied by the projected area this projected dia right this pressure is acting on this dia so we generally take the projected projected length at which it is acting so that is the diameter of this length right diameter of this cylinder so p multiplied by dia multiplied by length is acting the pressure is acting on this that area right so the area for pressure is p multiplied by d and multiplied by the length length of this cylinder right so this is the length this is the length of cylinder right so p d l so p multiplied by diameter projected area generally we take the projected projected length the length on which it is pressure is acting that is a projected length that is a diameter that is a diameter and length l on entire length this pressure is acting and that will be equal to the stress is developed in the material 
that stresses are sigma h multiplied by the area on which these are acting. So if it is thickness is t, if the thickness is t, t is the thickness, then and l is the length, then what is happening is So what is happening is this sigma h is acting on l multiplied by t plus l multiplied by t right. So two times l multiplied by t because l multiplied by t this and l multiplied by this. So sigma h will be acting on two times l multiplied by t length multiplied by the thickness on which this sigma h is acting. So this will be the hoop stress right and from here we can find out the sigma h the hoop stress is given by pd by 2t l and l cancel so pd by 2t so this is the hoop stress in a material of the boiler or lpg cylinder or any pressure vessel cylindrical pressure vessel so this is how the hoop stress is acting this pressure is acting on certain area area which is the diameter multiplied by the length diameter the projected length projected length on which this pressure is acting that is a diameter right projection of this part projection of this part is a basically the diameter so p multiplied by d multiplied by the length on the entire length it is acting and sigma h is acting on this length multiplied by t plus this length multiplied by t so sigma h is two times l multiplied by t so we will get the hoof stress as p d by 2 t and longitudinal stress as pd by 40 and you can see here by two in two terms that sigma h is greater than sigma l right so sigma h is greater than sigma l and both are tensile stresses both are tensile stresses